Hey there, I want to talk to you today about the DeskPy Super 6C, which stands for Super 6 CM4 cluster. Uh, what this is, is it looks like a normal kind of desktop mini ITX motherboard. Uh, it kind of is, but kind of isn't. So it's the same form factor, same standard. So the cool thing about this is, is unlike other Raspberry Pi projects, this will fit in a standard mini ITX case. And you can get loads of different mini ITX cases for like home entertainment systems or ruggedized for putting in the back of vehicles. So it's a really good form factor to kind of base a project on. Now, the interesting thing about this board and why I'm so psyched about it is, as you can see, it supports uh, six Raspberry Pi CM4 modules on the same board on the one side. And on the flip side, it supports six uh, M2 2280 uh, SSD drives as well. Uh, and each one of those is connected to one Raspberry Pi via the PCIe interface. Uh, what it's also got on board is it's got a uh, gigabit Ethernet and it's an eight port switch, so six Pis, so six ports used there and two spare ports, which are uh, shown out onto the motherboard. The way it works is you have you know, CM4 number one here. That is your kind of main node. So that links into your HDMI outputs, your USB outputs, and there's headers here for more USB. Uh, and this you can use for flashing the first board. Now there's also on the device, there's uh, USB connectors for each individual Pi. So there's one, for example, so you can flash them on board as well. You don't have to keep unplugging and replugging to update them. Now, the reason I quite like this board uh, is because it's quite flat in terms of how many you can get on it. So this is, you know, 6.7 inches wide. It's a standard form factor, but you've got six Raspberry Pi compute module fours uh, on it and on the back they're very flat the NVMe drives so this is a fantastic kind of form factor it's very small very lightweight I'm really looking looking forward to playing with it now the problem is of course that trying to get hold of one <laughs> Raspberry Pi compute module four let alone six is super super difficult right now uh, they're short in stock all over the world there's a big waiting list for them so the interesting thing about the Compute Module 4 is that the same form factor is being supported by other ARM um, uh, chip makers and hobby computer makers. So one of the ones I'm looking at, I've got a, a Pine Phone and a Pi Phone Pro. I've been kind of testing them for a while to see if I can replace, you know, uh, kind of the iPhones and Google Pixels of this world to have a full-fledged Linux phone. Um, whilst I'm on the train, I can do work on it, I can hack code. Um, so that's what I've been using for a while. Now, the company and group behind that is called Pine64, and they also make single board computers. And one of the things they are looking at doing as well is they've got this new CM4 compliant form factor called SoQuartz. And SoQuartz is based on the rock chip RK3566, uh, and that is a slightly older ARM chip compared to the CM4s. I think the CM4s have got quad core. A72 uh, ARM chips, whereas uh, the RK3566 is a quad core ARM A55. So it's slightly older design, but you know, still supports the same type of software. But the thing I'm super, super interested about with the SoQuartz module is well, A, I can actually buy them. <laughs> they are available. You know, the older chips uh, are available. Um, the other thing that it's got on it is it does have support for uh, ARM Trust Zone built into it and that's interesting because it means potentially I can use it for not just cryptographic um, you know uh, workloads but I could also potentially uh, kind of modify the board or create a different board with a similar design that uses uh, you know a TPM module so trusted um, you know tr a route of trust so somewhere I can secure key material um, and that <laughs> that becomes important when you start to run clusters um, so a lot of kind of Raspberry Pi projects, you have a single board computer and you're fine. What I'm interested in doing is putting compute in edge locations. So in the back of ambulances, in remote health centers in Africa, um, you know, those type of use cases or in the back of a retail store where you've not got a local IT admin, so it just kind of has to work. So I'm interested in, you know, clustered computing uh, for reliability. Now, you're probably shouting at the computer and go, what do you mean reliability? You've only got one power supply here and you've only got kind of one 
uh, network interface. Well, yeah, that's true, but the entire store or the entire ambulance, that, that's true of it. There's, there's no getting around it, right? So what I'm interested in here is, well, if one of the compute modules fails, I can still have an active service. So it's some level of resilience. And the other resilience comes from the storage as well. Rather than have one computer with a big drive, I can have six computers, each with a smaller drive, and then use something like Ceph uh, to create a storage array across that. So if there is one failure, at least I can still use the other storage and I'm not lost any data. So that's what I mean by reliability. You know, it's not just about, you know, power and networking. The cool thing about the SoQuartz modules that I'm going to plug into it, though, is as well as having kind of the quad core processor, the ARM processor, what it also has, it has a GPU on board as well. So it has the Mali G52 GPU. Um, and that's interesting, not because I want to do any kind of 3D graphics or anything, but if I'm doing something like uh, Open Compute or OpenGL, then I can use that graphics chip to kind of accelerate those operations. So anywhere you've got large matrices or large um, you know, vectors of data, you, you, that works quite well putting in a GPU. To, to process it. So it's not just about machine learning AI workloads, although that is part of it, but it's about large amounts of data being chewed on by lots of computers. So one thing I'm doing in my uni degree is using OpenABM COVID-19 simulator to uh, kind of predict how, uh, based on different types of controls we could do, like you know locking everybody down versus using an app to control what the risk threshold is so to prevent a pandemic. You know, that type of processing um, is highly parallelizable if you know what you're doing. So what I'm interested in is, well, can I have that running on these type of boards? Um, not necessarily for COVID-19, but for kind of other healthcare use cases. So for example, can I have one of these boards sat next to a scanner in a hospital and that scanner does an MRI scan and maybe I've got you know scientists all around the world saying, well, here's a machine learning algorithm to spot and screen for this particular disease, or here's another machine learning algorithm to screen for this disease. I could have that all running on here in parallel, looking at the images as they're being scanned. So you can immediately give more information back to the radiologist. So that's one of the things I'm kind of interested in, uh, as well as, you know, the usual kind of COVID-19 simulations as well. The other cool thing on the SoQuartz is there is actually a neural process unit as well. It's an MPU, uh, which is rated at 0.8 tops, which isn't huge. But if you do need to do your kind of convolution operations with, you know, 8 and 16 bit um, integers or you've got 16 bit floating point operations you can do, we can actually compile to a particular format that's handled by that chip on board. So you can completely offload that type of workload and that's supported in kind of TensorFlow, PyTorch, you know, Keras and, and all these different machine learning and AI modules as well. System memory is basically the same. As a CM4, you know, you get options kind of two, four, and eight gigabytes, still LPDDR4 RAM as well. Um, you have the option, interestingly, on the SoQuartz, the EMC module is not permanently attached. There's a little uh, kind of plug on it. So you can choose to whether to plug in a kind of SPI flash module, uh, which is super interesting for, you know, the reasons I was talking about earlier with Trust Zone. You could use that flash module to store, you know, key material, or you can plug in an EMMC module and have your operating system on there and just use your NVMe for storage. So there's some interesting um, use cases there. One thing I will mention, top tip, is the EMMC module, if you get the 16 gig model of the SoQuartz, it's a much, much slower module from a different manufacturer. If you get the 32 gig and above, it's a SanDisk module. So super reliable, super quick. Now, I didn't know this before I bought one. So the one that's being shipped at the moment is the 16 gig one because I was like, well, 16 gigs enough for anybody, right? Um, but no. So uh, that's one thing to watch out for. Um, but other than that, you know, the, the SoQuartz board is pretty similar to the CM4. It doesn't do as many HDMI plugs. It's, it's one HDMI uh, and support for uh, EDP instead of HDMI on the second slot. Um, but in terms of kind of compute and what I want it for, I want to run you know, multi-node machine learning algorithms. So for me, this processor could be much better because each of these, each of those four cores, I can individually shut the power off from as well. 
um, and I can really tune the performance of this thing. But when I need to like scale up and do lots of machine learning, I've got the GPU, I've got the neural processing unit as well. So I've got quite a lot of options on this board to tune it within an inch of its life of performance. So that's what I'm super interested in. The other thing I'm interested in as well, you know, if you're setting up a secure Kubernetes cluster, you know, by default, Kubernetes is a bit of a wild west. Now, what I want to do here is say, well, actually, this first compute module four, maybe that's um, one of my control plane nodes for my cluster, and the other are all worker nodes, okay? Now, that's fine, but because I've only got one kind of network interface coming in here, by default, this is just a kind of a dumb, you know, unmanaged switch. It's a Realtek chip. It's the 8370N on this board. Now, I happen to know that the Realtek chips, um, by default, it runs in unmanaged switch mode. But I've got like a Netgear here, which is also a Realtek. And what you can do with this chip is you can actually reprogram the EEPROM, which is an electronically erasable programmable read-only memory, which is basically its configuration. And you can actually change those registers. So I don't have to change the firmware or break it. I can just change the configuration of those registers and I can independently pin each of these um, interfaces for each one of these cards, Ethernet adapters, to one or both of these uh, adapters. And I can also have multiple VLANs. These are like virtual networks on the same physical link. So the traffic isn't seen by anybody but who's on the same VLAN. So I can have a management VLAN just rooting through, say, a management interface to the first Raspberry Pi. And then I can have like a data VLAN or a Ceph storage VLAN, if I set this up for shared storage, uh, on all the other five. So I can have network separation on one motherboard. Uh, and by having it on the Realtek chip, it's not on the compute module 4. So it means that if something, you know, if you're running a container in Kubernetes on one of these modules and it breaks out and gets root, then it can alter, you know, it can't start being promiscuous and listening into the message traffic for the management plane because it's just simply not on the management plane. You know, it's on, it's controlled by this external Realtek chip. So I'm kind of super interested in seeing if I can set up those VLANs for this as well. And then it becomes very, very interesting for secure edge compute for things like Kubernetes workloads because, you know, within Kubernetes, I can lock down the containers, but I can also, if the worst does happen and... You know, you get you get critical vulnerabilities all the time, um, and they get discovered all the time. So you can't rely on you know this security um, on within Kubernetes. You've got to do something at the physical layer. So normally, what you do is you kind of have separate compute for your management, separate compute um, for your workloads. But you know, in a remote environment or the back of a store or the back of an ambulance. You've, you've simply not got enough room, enough space, weight, power for multiple of these things. Um, so you need to have some sort of separation on board. So I'm super excited to see if I can kind of hack around with the Realtek chip on board to see if I can do some of that stuff. Now, this board does have its limitations. It's great because it's super thin, but there is another board that's similar that I've also uh, got on back order. So the Turing Pi project, if you go to TuringPi.org, They've got a Turing Pi 2 design that I've been desperately waiting for for the, like, the past nine months. Um, but they finally got onto Kickstarter and started production on them. So I got on the, one of the first production runs. So hopefully within a few weeks, um, you know, I'll get a board through the mail. Now, the interesting thing about that board is it's only got four compute modules. And because it's a slightly different form factor, um, they also support different compute module adapters to plug into it. So that's one benefit. You get more choice rather than just the CM4 connector style. You can directly plug in a Jetson Nano and just use it straight away. So that's kind of cool. Um, but you only get four nodes. Now, what they have done on that motherboard is they have thought about this management plane problem. So what they have is they have a chip on the Turing Pi 2, which is like just a microcontroller, which has I.O. pins, which goes to each of the individual boards. Now, that becomes very interesting for things like remote management um, and having a separate out-of-band management plane separate from Ethernet because that really does give you complete separation. So I'm thinking, well, got to use that board and kind of roll out updates. So send updates via the microcontroller to store in some storage like an EMMC device. Um, you know, send those updates to the board 
and then tell that controller locally to go and update each individual board in turn. So that's a kind of interesting thing I'm looking at as well. But lots and lots of cool things we can do with these things. So yeah, this has been the kind of DeskPy uh, Super 6C. It retails for about $199. There's a, a similar board from DWM. It's basically the same board. It's produced under license. So the original board is the, the DeskPy uh, Super 6C, which you can get from DeskPy.com. Uh, again, this video hasn't been sponsored by anybody, um, but you know I like this board, so I ordered it uh, out of my own money. So I'm going to try this out soon and hopefully try out a Seth cluster and uh, bare bone Kubernetes on it as well. So hopefully you found that interesting. I'll get back to you in a, a week or two with how the projects are progressing. Hopefully by the time we talk again, I'll have received the So Quartz board so I can go through it in great detail. Uh, and show you how that works with this uh, master board. Thanks for your time.